Amen. We will all make the Lord proud. Make him very, very proud. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, man. God bless you. Thank you, choir. It's been wonderful. Amen. Lord, bless you. Lord, favor you. The Lord, cause his countenance to rise upon you. Be gracious unto you. Show you mercy. In the name of Jesus. You know, Paul said, we are what we are by the grace of God. But the grace of God, awesome, that's what God has saved. But he says we can only access it by faith. Romans 5, 1 to 2 says, therefore being justified by faith, we have peace with God by whom we have access into this grace. Titus 2.11 says, The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. What's stopping them from connecting it is, is faith. It's faith. When the Lord shows you mercy, you know, he says, Lo, do, do, da, ju, da, ju. Lo, do, do, da, ju, da, ju. Lo, do, do, da, ju, da, ju. Lo do do da ju anure yo si wa ti ti aye lo do do da ju da ju anure yo si wa ti ti aye lo do do da ju da ju Many times we confuse grace with mercy. Awesome, awesome grace. But when God shows you mercy, you know, they compare God's mercy to the mercy of David when he brought Mephibosheth. He said, come and sit by He said, I'm a dead dog. <laughs> he didn't even listen to him. He said, put him on my table. Restore his fat. They should behead him. He's supposed to be beheaded with his lineage. Killed. Give him his father's land, his father's properties. You, 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 serve him. Make sure he lacks nothing. He said, I made that. They didn't listen. They just walked away. That's mercy. When they give it to you, oh God Almighty. Oh God Almighty. In Psalm 136, oh, give thanks unto God, for he is good and his mercy endureth forever. And everything they wrote, and they wrote about God, they will put, and his mercy endure it forever. What is mercy? The Greek puts it that a superior being should bend, stoop down to show kindness to an inferior being. A superior being should condescend, go out of his way in order to show kindness, compassion to an inferior being. In the Greek, it means two words, to wave and to demonstrate strength, meaning you receive strength through waivers. You know, there are companies that bring in goods. They don't pay duty like you. <laughs> I hope you don't know. You know that. They have what they call waivers at the port. Waivers. That means they can bring in anything. And they are not confined to the procedures you are meant to be given to. Just because the man at the top likes their face anyway. <laughs> It's called mercy. May God be gracious unto you. Amen. May he show you mercy. Amen. Mercy. Amen. Mercy. Amen. May the mercy of God come upon you, Amen. upon your household, 
upon your children and upon your lineage in the name of Jesus. God said to David, my mercy I will not take from your lineage no matter how they misbehave. Whatever they do, I shall be. Let's look at one or two things. It's a message I'll finish next week, but there are one or two things I'll point out in 2 Samuel chapter 9 about the story of David and Mephibosheth. I'll read from verse 1 to 12, 2 Samuel chapter 9. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now, God called this mercy. Now, if you are going to get saved, even if they have to give you the gift of faith, you still must demonstrate faith to assess the grace. But if I want to show you mercy, I may not require, even if I require something, I may not require anything from your hand. I may say, all right, I want to show Ire mercy for mommy's sake. And Ire is abusing me. Doesn't matter. She'll get the mercy. Why? For mommy's sake. That's how mercy can work. And she's misbehaving and losing qualification. I said, no, just for mommy's sake. Ignore her. It doesn't matter. Because we want to see the mercies of David that God said he's going to show to Israel. He said, is there still none any left of the house of Saul that may show him kindness, which is mercy, for Jonathan's sake? Here, you don't need to know why they want to help you. You don't need to know the essence. All you know, there's something in your lineage that you have no knowledge about that's going to bring you kindness from God. And there was of the house of Saul, a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him to David, the king said to him, Adal Ziba, he said, that servant is he. And the king said, is there not yet any of the house of Saul that may show him kindness of God unto him? Ziba said to the king, Jonathan had yet a son which is lame in his feet. The king said to him, where is he? Ziba said to the king, behold, he's in the house of Micah, the son of Amiel in Lua Deba. And the king David sent and fetched him out of the house of Micah, the son of Amiel from Lua Deba. When Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come to David, he fell on his face, did reverence. David said, Mephibosheth, he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said to him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness. That kindness is mercy. For Jonathan, your father's sake, I will restore to you all the land of Saul, your grandfather, your father. You will eat bread at my table continually. He bowed himself and said, <laughs> Oh God, what is thy servant that you should look upon such a dead dog as I am? But it was right. It's a dead dog. A sword should be put to his head. That's the rule. That is the rule. Because he's a contender to that throne. And he can fight your lineage on it. So he must be killed. Not he should be. He must. The king did even answer him. Said to Ziba, Saul's servant, said to him, I've given unto thy master's son all that pertained both to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and your servants shall till the land for him. Ah, yeah, my God. For him. <laughs> you shall bring in the fruits, and that thy master's son may have food to eat. But Mephibosheth, your master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Kai. You don't have an idea what mercy is. That's just it. What did Meshibuja do to qualify for this? Nothing. Who did he walk? Jonathan. All right. And God referred to it. Let's go to Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles chapter six. I read from verse 42, O Lord, turn not away from the face of thy anointed. Remember the mercies of David, your servant. So they're beginning to refer to the mercies of David. When David gave a man who was not qualified to a benefit, 
a benefit that the price was paid not by him, but by another. In Isaiah 55, The Lord will be merciful unto you. Amen. I'll read from verse 1. Everyone that thirst, come ye to the waters. He that had no money, come ye buy and eat. Come buy wine, milk without money and without price. Wherefore do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfy not. Hacking diligently unto me. Eat that which is good. Let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear. Come to me here and your soul shall live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. Even the sure message of the meaning. You don't have to. Somebody has tilled the ground. Why are you running up and down? Come and eat. I want to give you the sure message of David. Where somebody has already tilled. And brought it out of and put it in a bus. All I need is to serve you. Just come and sit. That's what God is saying. Israel, why are you running at a scatter? Come and sit. I will give you the short message of David. Why are you struggling to do what? For bread and labor and wine and milk. When I can give you the short message of David. Somebody else will till it for you and you will eat. It's of Meshibosheth type. Come and sit and enjoy. That's what God was telling Israel. He said, I'm making you this offer. And of course, in Acts 13, it was restated again in verse 34. As concerning that he raised him up from the dead, now no more to return to corruption, that's Jesus. He said, on this wise, I will give you the sure, very sure mercies of David. I'll give it to you. It's God's mercy. And it is explained like what David did to Mephibosheth. I'll give it to you. God's mercy. May God be merciful unto you. Amen. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 21, 13, it says God's mercy is very, very great. Talks about it endures for a thousand generations. A thousand generation. That's how God's mercy can work. Meaning, a thousand generation can enjoy one act you do with God and have mercy from God. A thousand of your lineage. Let me tell you, there are still people enjoying what Abel did. Enjoying what David did up till today, and it's over a thousand generations. Why? Because of the mercy of God. In the book of Luke, the Bible says, and the neighbors of Elizabeth heard how God has shown her what mercy, 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 mercy. God says his mercy is great. His mercy is important. And it's more important than fasting. The church should teach us how to attain mercy. More than subjecting us to 206 months. The people, one small problem, 40 days. I know people who fast the whole year. And they're not kind. They're very nasty. They're not merciful. Very nasty. And they fast from January to December. Not continuously. They start 40 days. They break it after three days. They do 21 days. They break it out. They do seven days. Then three days. Then seven days. One man, he collapsed because he was fasting. I saw a pastor carried on a bed. He couldn't walk because he was fasting. God said, I would rather you show mercy. In Hosea 6.6, 6, he said, I prefer you to show mercy than to fast. He said, I prefer mercy to sacrifices. He said, I'm a God of mercy. God of mercy. May God show us mercy. Amen. What do you need for mercy? The first point I want to bring out is in Psalm 103.
Psalm 103, verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy towards them that fear him. You have an idea of the distance of heaven to earth. I think I played one planet video for you people, right? That one is small. That, that's not a distance. That one is very small distance. That's small distance. At least the closest star to the earth. Closest. The closest. We take 90 billion light years, right? To get there. 90 billion light years. One light year is 900 billion kilometers. 900 billion. That's one light year. Then you take you 90 billion light years to get there. Then he said that distance from heaven to earth is how great God's mercy is to those that fear him. Who are those? What's the qualification of those that fear God? Because we have different definitions of those that fear God. Some look at somebody who's quiet, you know, dresses well. You don't see cleavage. Everything is up, you know, long skirt. As, oh, very God-fearing, you know. <laughs> how did they reckon holiness to dress? When God said he does not look to outward appearances. So how did they reckon holiness to dress? Meaning, if God does not look to outward appearances, let me just leave that. <laughs> Stop for controversy. You know, <laughs> you know, there's this thing that sticks in our brain. We three kings of Orient, but they are not three, they are many. <laughs> if they were three, they can't make such a stir in Israel. They can't carry such level of gold that they will live on for more than two years. They must have been more than three. But we all stick with three, Abby. One person stole three and everybody sticks with three. And then we created a song with three. We three kings. I think, please, what you're saying, please put, we 12 kings. <laughs> of Oriental. I mean, bearing gifts, we travel so far, and on and on and on. But we just stick with that three and everybody just believes there are three. But the Bible never said three. You know, somebody just said three and everybody just talked with three. And, Nobody was buried there to investigate and say, sir, why did you say three? We can't find three in the Bible. Everyone just stuck with three. How did we stuck, get stuck with Friday, Good Friday, Sunday, Easter, Monday? One person just said Friday, Good Friday. Nobody went to the Bible to check. Uh, Friday to Sunday is two days, not three days. Abby? The Bible says it was in the grave. It was in the um, belly of the earth. Three days and three nights. So it's supposed to be Thursday night to Sunday morning. Somebody said Friday night, and there was no burial Christian there. And Sunday morning, and everybody just took it. <laughs> and we're stuck with that. But it's okay, it doesn't matter. Whether it's Friday or Sunday, what is important is he died and he resurrected. And he's seated at the right hand of the Father, clothed in power, where he leads to make intercession for us forever and ever. And he's coming again in glory and power. That's what is important. Not Friday and Sunday. But I just want to show you how we easily get stuck with stuff. You know? So his mercy is available for those who fear him. Who are those who fear God? Let's stick with the word. Malachi. Let me show you somebody who fears God. Malachi is not tight place. Because <laughs> the only place most people know in Malachi. Say you have robbed God. <laughs> you know, you'll be shocked. Most Christians, the only part of Malachi they know. Say you have robbed God. I have stolen God's money tight and offering. Have And most people, the only part they can quote in Malachi, try me and see if I will not bless you and put out the windows of heaven. They know it. I've even forgotten it. <laughs> I've forgotten it because that's not where I got stuck on. You know, you get it. I've forgotten it. Um, who can remind me? I know somebody who should be able to remind me of the scriptures. Eh? The Malachi, is it two? Or, is that one is two, Abby. You have robbed God. Rob God, the, the thief, the God robber and the man robber. Malachi 3, ni? Uh, 310. Ah, I, I, you see, I don't know. It's all good, Sean knows. <laughs> I didn't know. All right, where do you say we're going? Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. Let's read from verse. Um, I want to know those who fear God. This definition of God, of those who fear Him, from verse 16. Then they, let's read it together, verse 16. Oh, then, okay, one, two, go. 
Then they that feared the Lord spoke often one to another, and the Lord hearkened and heard it, and a book of remembrance was written before him. For them that feared the Lord and that thought upon his name. So what were they discussing? The name of the Lord. So when you see people sharing about God, they fear God. That's God's definition of those that fear. You know, ah, that man, he can't steal you. He fears God. It's a lie. It has nothing to do with that. You know, women, when they say, what kind of man do you like? I love a God for everybody. You know what they desire a God for everybody? He would chase other women. <laughs> That's our definition of a God for everybody. Ah, he fears God. He would look, ah, you know, he's a God for guy. No! That's not God's definition. God's definition is those who share about God. Say, so guess what? God is good. Then they explain why God is good. God say, ah, that guy fears me. <laughs> Can you see many times that our definition is always different from, I, I said I must share this one because everybody believes a God-fearing man is a nice guy. That man never raised his hand against his wife. It's God-fearing. And most women, when you ask them, what's the first thing you want a man? A God-fearing man. If it's God-fearing, the whole house is going to be filled with the word. <laughs> what word? About God. And when it's time to sleep, and you call on the bed beside you, you say, guess what, darling? You say what? You know, when Jesus, hey! <laughs> ah, 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 please, we have left church. <laughs> but you ask for a God-fearing man. We have left church, oh, leave church. Ah, can you Please, I'm your wife. <laughs> I'm not your church member here. I'm your wife. Eh? Did you hear me? So, boy, I was thinking, you know, why does the Lord just say, ah, ah, that's a good fairy man? I mean, is that right? <laughs> it's a God's mercy as high as heaven to the earth will be on that man. Have you wondered? Those, now, and now, it's not like the man of the talents that hid his own and said, Lord, I know thee to be an austere man. No, not that one. No. Not that one. Was he right? The Lord didn't deny there is an austere being. He was correct. Because the Bible says he cannot deny himself. If we deny him, he will deny us. If we remain faithless, he still abided faithful. And he will not deny himself. So if the man said, you're austere, man, the Lord was not austere. I said, no, I'm not austere. But say you're austere. He said, very good. At least you know I'm austere. Let me now show you austere. So the Lord is austere. So we know you to be a hard man. He's a hard man. Right? But I know him to be kind and merciful. Yes. I don't know what you know. I know him to be kind and merciful. And it's what you know of him. David said, I know thee to be what? Merciful. Let me fall into the hands of the Almighty. For he is merciful. What did he see? Mercy. Do you know God too is, a, is an area father? The Bible says he was ambushed and were laid. You get it? Now, what do area boys do? They will lay you. So if you know him as will lay, God will lay you on the road. Say, so, well, boy, close here. Well, I'll be close here. <laughs> he will tell you, I'll be close here. But, but. <laughs> but he will lay you. And you don't need to do something wrong before you are will laid. You get it? Mistress will may will lay you even if you're okay. So the day you think you are good, you are walking by, God will still will lay you. See, because all you know about him is to will lay so, boy, close, boy, see you. I close you, boy. Okay, I be. My 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 year forty. I be Baba. I told you one day I went to Key for Fuel, and they have a, their own language. And there was a queue for Fuel, so it was my turn. So they were those days. So when there was queue, so this area boy was one piloting everywhere. But when I got there, I didn't really stand the queue. They said, "Loba, fry or something." Money tell you fry or be ah. Bad here, man. So I said, yes, I won't pray. So I said, what up? I said, boys, they blocked everybody. I came, of course, I took care of Fryo. <laughs> <coughs> then a guy came. Fryo's boy was, Fryo was just sitting on a chair, monitoring everything. 
Oh, my tar, tar, for, for a boy, yes. So Pharaoh's boy was there. Said, oh, yeah, yeah, this, this. The other guy just came, just gave him a punch on the chest. Boy, boy, ah! Then the guy, he, <laughs> he used his head to hit his chest. Bro, I said, I, you know, I don't want to fight when I tell him my friend. I don't want to. You, you, you want to fight when you know how they can break anything. When they're selling for a cake, no. You don't, you, you, you do. So I said, no, don't fight. Say, ah, one kill, I want to hear. That is. I look like, uh, uh, I was, uh, I said, you are greeting, say, ah, uh, okay, they are greeting themselves, yeah, I like, yeah, but, but, uh. <laughs> Jesus, there's a language of faith, there's a language of those that will lead, there's a language, there's everyone has his own language, praise God, praise God. So God says, if you make out time to discuss, you know, like um, prophet, he likes sharing, he likes sharing he likes sharing about process. That one doesn't attract much of mercy. He likes sharing about different, but when you share about the Lord and you share right about him, you are going to be given mercy as high as heaven to the earth. And it means you fear God. So when you are praying for a partner, think twice when you talk about asking God for a man that fears him. So that when you are doing honeymoon, you won't be sharing about the Lord. You are quiet. Praise the Lord. Amen. Everyone in the house say amen. amen. <laughs> amen. Oh Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. I'll give one more point but this one concerns me so I think I'll go to this one. There are other ones but I'll go to this one that concerns me. Second Timothy chapter 1. How many of you like to see God's mercy? Experience God's mercy? All right. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Mm, I love this. From verse 15. Mm. From verse 15 to 18. And I read. No, we should all read together. We should all read. I shouldn't read this alone. I love this. Now let's go. These thou knowest, that all they which are in Asia be turned away from me, of whom are Figelos and Hamogenes. 16. The Lord give mercy to the house of Onesiphorus, for he often refreshed me. I was not ashamed of my chains. 17. But when he was in Rome, he sought me out very diligently. He found me. Verse 18. Lord grant unto him that may find mercy of the Lord in that day. And in how many things he ministered to me at Ephesus. You know very well. Mm. <laughs> All he's saying is if you take good care of God's ministers, you'll find mercy. Of which I am. I told you, I no, I like the fear of God more. <laughs> <coughs> Don't join anyone to run down God's minister. It drives mercy away. Don't. 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 Sometimes, I, I, when I ask the Lord, why are young men dying? So much in our times. Why? I had to ask because it was getting too much. And God, who might be a witness, answered me. So said, when did they start dying? When social media came into place, go and take note before social media. They were not dying. So their mouth is emitting death. And that's why they are dying. I make bold to say it. The reason why the youth are dying today, check note, out of 25 obituaries, 82. 40, 20, 50, 3. Is that not how it is? How many 80s do you see on social media talking? No. Running their mouth. No. God said they are walking in death with their mouth. They are loose talk. Check it. 50 years ago, they were not dying like this. They were not. They were not running their mouth like this. 
That is why they are that. I brought you the solution to a predominant menace that is killing the society. What does not concern them, they run their mouth. If they buy a car for the Jew of Redeem, they are not in any church. Oh. Or maybe another church. Are you? Maybe. Does it like that? I am. God said, okay. Death. Death just say, he that keeps his mouth, keeps his life. He has run his mouth. I'm authorized. Please, Lord, don't deny. God said, access granted. And they take him out straight. And they come and say, and he was a nice man. Kai, man, yeah. There's nobody that goes to him that doesn't go out smiling. If people were to die, it's not this man. Oh, really? Check his mouth. It's quiet. Abby? <clears throat> it's so bad. Someone was telling me. He said, You mean you don't do burials every month? I said, No. Ah. He said, That one is normal. I said, Church, youth. Every month, say yes. Say, oh, please, don't be, don't be too religious. And these times we're in, say standard. She'll be burying youth every month. Say, every church does it. I say, really? In E.W. Kenya's church, 5,000. For 25 years, only one person got sick. 25 years, only one. E.W. Kenyon. A church of 5,000. And that person, when he visited the person in the hospital, 70-something-year-old woman, by the time he left, the woman packed her bag and left, and she was healed. They don't fall sick. Why? He taught them to only say the word of God. They don't say what they don't know. He said it. They said, I taught the church to operate the law of the spirit of life by saying only what God is saying. And for 25 years, 5,000 people, not one person took ill. This is also what Jess Smith, 92. When he's walking, 25-year-old men are running. For 25 years, he said, I didn't have a headache. He said, God taught me the secret. He said, keep your mouth, you keep your life. And he wasn't sick for 25 years. No complaint, no murmuring, no grumbling. No matter what happens, they look for God's mind and they say it. And they're healthy. God will help us. In Jesus' name. God will show us mercy. In the name of Jesus. So we see two things that attract God's mercy. One is to fear God. Doesn't sound like it, but to talk about God. Number two is to bless God's ministers. If you can't bless them, don't curse them. Don't abuse them. Don't run them down. If you don't understand them, turn away and leave them to God. Before God. I, I remember... I can't forget this. Kenneth Hagin went to a pastor's meeting and they talk about a pastor who fell into sexual sin. When they talk, Kenneth said, oh, I thought, come on, that's wrong. Why did he do that? That's bad. That's what he said. <laughs> that's not what he said in social media. You know social media? They will run, 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 run down. That's what he said. Oh, come on, why should he have done that? That's bad. That was all he said. So when he was about to sleep, a white cloud appeared in his room and Jesus stepped out. He said, how dare you talk about my servant like that? He said, what? You made that comment? So on the day of judgment, you will give account of that statement. He said, that's what he told him. Go and read the book now. He said, you give account of that statement you just made. He said, for your information, he's my servant, not yours. And I, he has fallen. And I will make him stand. And the rest of you, you will give account of what you said about him on the day of judgment. Then he went back into the cloud and the cloud went. He knew he was in trouble. How did Benny Hinn, how did Miracle stop in his ministry for about four or five years? He watched, uh, or no, Maurice Cerullo. He said it himself now, raising money. If you have a $500, please stand. Those of you who want to give 200 dollars And he said, what is all this now? That's what he said. And the miracle ceased. And when he went to God in prayer, he said, what you said about my servant, Maurice Cerullo? He said, go and, restitute, go and restitute with him. And the miracles will return. He gave him 150,000. Maurice Cerullo didn't hear. He didn't know what he said. He was not there. He was in the city room. He said, he said what is all this now? I was not raising money like this. What's all this? That's what he said. Now you can see why young men are dying. 
They don't say that now. What they say is worse. You know that? That's lost anointed, being punished for that. How much more? The one that is not the lost anointed. So you can see why young men are dying. And Lord said, correct it, and they will leave. Those were his words. Say, if he's corrected, they will leave. <coughs> amen. 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 And amen. amen. Proverbs 28. I've always told you, don't join them. Right? Yes, sir. Don't join them. Here, if we do what you don't like, come. Just arm yourself with the word. Here, the word settles all issues. Okay? Anyone can be challenged. But make sure you're coming from a scriptural background. Then we'll listen to you. And if we see our faults, we make corrections. But you must come with the word. If you don't come with the word, we'll take it as um, not too good. But you must come with the word. Except what you are talking about is purely administrative, is not the word. Then that's different. But we submit to the word. So I can be corrected. I've come here to preach. And someone called me after service and corrected me from the word. And I think I came next Sunday to address it. Yeah. I said, no, what you said, this is what the Bible says. I said, oh, Jesus Sorry, I added that. That was wrong. And I came the next Sunday and I said, I'm sorry because of this and this. It was somebody in church that called me and corrected me. And I love that person for it. And I thank God for such a person. God will bless. Allah and Jekyll, you had to work for me. So that they can keep correcting me. You get it? But with the word. Say, this is what the Bible says. This is what you said. You said this. It was about Joseph. Said so there was no proof he was divining, though he had the cup of divination. So could have given it to him as a wedding gift from his father-in-law, the priest of uh, On. Abby? Yes. But there was no proof that he divined. The proof that he feared God. He loved God. Right? Yes. And I said, oh. And I said, uh, Joseph, it I said, okay. I, I take correction to that. And I corrected it immediately. So you don't need to run down. Just come and correct by the word. Okay? We'll be glad to have you to correct us. So Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper. But whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. Whosoever covereth his sin, the Bible says, shall not prosper. <clears throat> but whosoever confesses and forsakes that sin will have mercy. So if you want to qualify for God's mercy, don't hide sins. Don't cover it. Confess it and forsake it and you'll be qualified for God's infinite mercy. Let me remind you of what mercy is. God bends condescends to show you kindness, to bless you, whether you merit it or not. If it demands for a condition for it and you can't satisfy it, you'll get another person to pay it on your behalf and then do it for you. I don't think anyone wants to miss that. That's mercy. That's mercy. Jonathan paid the price for the mercy. Mephibosheth enjoyed the mercy. He didn't pay a dime. He was just running his mouth. They just ignored him. <coughs> but I know somebody who runs his mouth and is living. Maybe his mother or his father has paid a due for God's mercy over his life. Maybe. And they leave him and allow him to live old. So we show you mercy because of your mother. And we show you mercy because of your father. He did this for the Lord. For that, we will spare you. That's God's mercy. What happens? As he runs his mouth, the spirit of death is activated and comes to him to take his life. But because of the mercy of God, the angel comes to block that spirit of death and helps him to do something that will activate the law of life in Christ Jesus, whether he's aware of it or not, to stop death from taking him. He may not be aware of the entire process. All he knows is that he just runs his mouth and he leaves. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
Why is it that you're so quiet when I'm talking about the minister of God one? When I spoke about the fear of God, you seem to enjoy that. When I talk about refresh my bowels, another one, you now became quiet. If you're not careful, I'll repeat that one again. <laughs> Praise God. Lord, be merciful unto you. Lord, show you mercy. God's mercy will prevail in your life, in your family, in your circumstance, in your situation, in the name of Jesus. You know, it's like favor. It's like favor, like our brother shared. Even a Songs of Solomon talks about our sister who is ripe for marriage and describes her in the pinnacle of beauty. And yet, he says, nobody comes to marry her because she was not favored. Esther was not the most beautiful, but she was the one that was favored. And the king chose her. Deuteronomy 24 says, without favor in a marriage, it will end in divorce. Surprisingly, I've seen nagging, contentious, nasty women, last in marriage. A very good one, not lasting in marriage. Why? Just because of favor. That's what God's mercy does. God's favor gives you a reward you don't deserve. God's favor puts you on a pay pack you can never work for in your life. In the book of Ecclesiastes, it talks about a man, a poor man in a city who delivered a city from the destruction of a great king. Nobody, the Bible says, remember to reward him. Why? His life was deprived of favor. They didn't even remember to say thank you to him. Then God gave Joseph favor, and Pharaoh made him lord over his house and over all the magicians of Egypt. That's favor. That's like mercy, but mercy is still greater. Mercy is much greater than that. Mercy brings you into such kindness and such favor and such disposition of God that no matter what you do, he turns his eye away from it and still determined to bless and lift you up, and he goes ahead to do it. Even if he has to find somebody else to pay the price on your behalf, he will seek that person, and they will pay that price and still do it for you. That's God's mercy. And I pray it in your home. I pray it in your life. I pray it in your family. I pray it in your career. That's why you hear people say, I don't know why I spared you but I just decided to spare. And I don't know why. I've seen it so many times. I don't know why I spared you. When I see work in people's business, a boss gave the staff, then, more than so many years ago, about a million dollars to sell on behalf of the bank. I said, this is the rate we give to you. So how will I get this rate? He said, I don't know how you do it. Sir, the current rate said, sell it as instruction of the bank and return the money Monday morning. And he traveled. I think they gave him on a Wednesday, gave her on a Wednesday. And on a Friday, I don't know whether it's Hamas or something that happened. And there was an international crisis. And dollar, the price fell against the Naira. And the proceed from that sale, the profit, she used to buy a car and deposit for a house. And when she finished, the crisis returned back to normal by Tuesday. <laughs> God will bend heaven and earth for a man. He will do it for you. Amen. He will remove kings and restore for your sake. Amen. That's what they call mercy. He will remove institutions just to bless you. He will upturn he will turn over and over just for people to get to you. Amen. The Lord be gracious unto you. Amen. The Lord be merciful unto you. Amen. God's mercy, like the dew of heaven, let it rain over your life. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus, God's mercy, let it come upon your children wherever they may be. In the name of Jesus. When God's mercy turns to you, the 
entire heaven is working all for your sake. They bend the earth up and down to favor you. Father, show us mercy. Be merciful to us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, be merciful to us in the name of Jesus. Show us the sure mercy of David. Let it come upon us, upon our children, upon our grandchildren, upon our lineage, in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. In John 4, he said to his disciples, he said, look, the field is ripe already. I'm sending you to go and reap where you did not sow. Others have labored. Others have sown. I've sent you to enter into their labor. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, he says, it is the gift of God. He says, it is the duty of man to work. In fact, the Bible says in Ephesians, let every man work and have what to give. It's an order. It's a command. It's the duty of man to work. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, it says, for any man to eat and drink from his own labor, says the prerogative of God. He said, a man will work and gather and then God chooses to give it to another man who will enjoy the fruit of that labor. Why? That man has found mercy. God has shown mercy to such a man. God will show such mercy to you in the mighty name of Jesus. To eat and drink from one's labor is not a right. It is a privilege. People think it's a right. Though someone today says you shall eat the labor of your hands. But you must understand there are preconditions. God says he gives it to another man who is good in the sight of God. So what was the condition for God to give such a man? It's somebody who is good in his sight. But Jesus said no man is good but God. So how do you measure good? God must measure you good. <laughs> Not by your works. It's a gift. So they give you the gift to be good. Then they give you the works of labor of another man. It's all God. It's all God. It's all God. It's all God. This song says, Mori Anuba. Mori Re. Abi? Is that not a song? Mori Anuba. Mori Anuba. Mori Anuba. Sorry. Oh, you think it's for everybody? No, it's not for everybody. Oh. No, 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 no. Trying to look for the right way to put it. It's not just good news. Um, while one is rejoicing over a good deed, a blessing from God, and you are yet to complete the celebration, they are coming with another news, which is even another good news, a better news to again. You are just sitting. You are dancing. Ah, alone. She will do well. Lua, she. Ah, it will do well. They lay you. You dance, dance, dance. They said, Excuse me. Say, This just happened. They said, We should tell you this, which is another great and a greater news. It will happen to you this year. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Why? God has shown you mercy. God has shown you mercy. God has shown you mercy. In the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm asking for mercy in health, in your career, 
in your finances, in your home, in your family, concerning your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your husband, your wife, your career, your business, your job. I ask for mercy. God special. It's a special, you know, <clears throat> there are ministries, they call it special intervention fund. It's a special intervention. The Lord himself will just step in. step in like that and restructure certain things and you'll get a call. Um, good morning. Good morning. Are you, don't let me mention the name. Are you called that? Should I say yes. Okay. I am so, 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 and so. Oh, good morning, sir. Um, I'm the so, 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 and so. Oh, my goodness. Good morning, sir. All right. Um, we have a liaison office. You're in Lagos, right? Say yes. We have a liaison office. And the, um, the director of so, so, and so will get across to you. You will have to see so, 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 and so within the next 48 hours. Amen. When you return, you return a changed person. Yes. You will return with escort. Yes. Probably with a pilot. Amen. <laughs> When you meet the powers that God has ordained, you notice that you never met them before. So I heard about you. And someone gave me your name. I was told you can do this, 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 this. What you will say, God will put in your mouth. And the power that be will not interview you. Say, have lunch with me. He <laughs> does your, your interview. Say, come on, have lunch. Come on, have lunch. Just wants to get to know you better. Then he will ask, and I'm actually thinking of this and this and this. What do you think? Say, take this appointment for now. I will still be in touch with you. I would still like to work directly with you. When? This year, not next year. Amen. News, good news. Amen. Good news. Amen. Good news. Amen. Good news. Amen. Coming. Good news. Amen. Coming. Good news. Amen. Coming. Good news. Amen. Good news. Amen. Good news. Amen. Calls for good things and good tidings Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I want to thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your mercy over us. Thank you for placing your mercy over our lives. We don't merit it. We don't deserve it. Yet you are showing us mercy. We thank you for it. We give you praise for it. We bless you for it. For your mercy, your kindness, your goodness. The king had hammers. What shall be done to the one whom the king wishes to do what? That's King um, Ahasuerus, right? Which is to show what? Yes. Kindness. How did he put it? The person the king wants to do good to. That's the book of yes. Esther. He yes. was talking to Haman. The king wants to show mercy to someone. What shall be done to the person? And it's you they are discussing. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Your story will change this year. Amen. It will change this year. Amen. It will change this year. Amen. They will send for you. Amen. It will change this year. Amen. They will send for you. Amen. It will change this year. Amen. They will send for you. Amen. It will change this year. Amen. They will send for you. Amen. It will change this year. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It's not only just political, but they will send for you. Amen. They will send for you. Amen. They will send... How your CV got into their hand, you will not understand. You will see it in their hand. You are so, so, and so, and they are reading your CV, and you are wondering, how did it get to the hand of this man? You don't know. But leave that to God. They will send for you. They will send for you. They will send for you. 
Somebody was telling somebody, say, you're not qualified for this job. But something said, I should give it to you. Even your interview, you failed. And our brother said, this is the worst interview of my life. Is that not what he said? And he got the job. And they promoted him when they were dismissing everybody. So don't let anybody know. How can your boss be telling you, hide the letter? We're promoting you, but others are told to go. Hide it so that they will not know. Because you are being promoted. It's the mercy of God. And it's coming on people. And it will be made manifest this year. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.